Hello, my dear. So you got a goddess oracle reading that I did on my Instagram stories not too long ago during the holiday season. I hope you've had a good holiday. I'm pulling cards for you right now. We are doing the work your light oracle cards and I'm going to pull about six cards and we're going to talk about them. So when you're ready, I want you to take a nice deep breath in. Deep breath out. And really close your eyes and just be open to receive the guidance that are found in these oracle cards. Just keep breathing. Cut all of them almost right now. Okay, so we have our cards, our six oracle cards. I really didn't do a spread for these, but I wanted you to have at least six cards. So the first card you got was Akasha. Your guidance is divinely guided. And I really like this for you. It might be time to look into your records to discover your purpose. You might need to look into getting an Akashic Records reading from someone, or you should just be really open to receiving any and all signs. I feel like you question a lot of your signs, like, was that a sign? Is that a sign? I don't know. And practice a lot of self-care going into 2020. Let this be the last few days of 2019 of you, like, having these bad habits. Soak it all in while you can. Because basically in 2020, you need to completely start over. Burn it down, girl. Burn all those bridges down that, you know, too many people are walking on. Cut them off. Snip, snip. So the second card I pulled for you, which I really like that analogy whenever we're talking about bridges that, you know, you might need to burn. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I burned my bridges and I fucked up. Sometimes burning your bridges with people is a necessity. And a lot of people don't talk about that because like it's, it's hard to like break up with a needy friend or a family member that you're like, I just can't stand them. They're so toxic. And sometimes the best way to go is to just slowly but surely back away. <laughs> and the next card you got is boundaries. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? And the actual picture is of a woman standing in the middle of all this cosmic energy that everyone's trying to take from her. And the whole purpose of this is is that this is very female energy led. So you need to look at all of the men and women, but they're mostly saying women that take, 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 take from you and don't give anything back because you are trying to establish like your own intuition, your own psychic energy. And all of these imprints are, are not doing anything for you from others because they're just trying to take and they're not giving you anything that is helpful or reassuring. So you definitely need to work on your boundaries with others. And if you're still like, oh my God, but this is uncomfortable shit. I feel like you're gonna be okay. Like you're gonna be fine. You just have to work on saying no in not necessarily the kindest way. Sometimes you need to bring out your inner bitch and girl, that'd be fine. It's fine. We all got a little inner um, Cersei Lannister in us from Game of Thrones. And if you don't know who Cersei Lannister is, you need to Google that shit. Or maybe the Mother of Dragons is your thing. You need to just burn all the bitches down to the ground. Whatever it is, that you need to channel to just be like, look, I need you to stop because you guys aren't healthy for me anymore. 
and it's, I mean, mostly it's because I feel like a lot of these people are just, they don't want to deal with their, bull, their bullshit. So it's easier to light a match to get a reaction from you than it is um, to really take a look at themselves and see where they need to improve. I feel like this person has a lot of Aries energy who like mainly pushes your buttons to get that reaction and that spark from you. And you're just like, oh my fucking God, I wish they would shut up <laughs> because they don't want to deal with themselves because that in itself is just years of karmic trauma and cycles. So for you, you need just stronger yet gentle boundaries, not for everybody, but I feel like for a small group of peeps, Maybe just needing to tell them to chill. Chill. So the next card I got, this is very like intuition and faith based reading. And I like this because not only is it the faith in others, it's kind of like the faith in yourself. You need to really evaluate why you are where you are. Because I feel like at this point in your life, you're like, oh my God. I was supposed to have X, Y, and Z, and I don't have it. All of my plans for what I want is not, like, they're not falling into place. Like, real-life plans, like, you were supposed to have a house, the kids, and, like, you don't have that. And so you're trying to figure out where you missed a step, and that's going to be very intuition-led for you. So the next card you got is Trust the Niggle. What is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? And I love this because you're um, a TCC member and you. this is literally a picture of three sisters. Trust your niggle. That's what we should start calling our intuition. Trust your little niggle friend. <laughs> so trusting your intuition, trusting your little body feelings. And this is something that like I struggle with. I mean, not necessarily struggle with, but I struggle toning down. Because if I have a body feeling, I'm like, fuck, I can't do that. Or, ooh, yes, I want more of that. Mm. Um, and maybe I listen to my body feelings a little too much. <laughs> and it's just about, I don't, it's a hard thing to explain intuition and how to not doubt it. It's kind of like breathing. You don't doubt that you're breathing. You just know that you are. To me, intuition is a bodily function that is happening all the time. And it has been tapered down and just kind of silenced by a society as a whole and as a collective. And we don't need that. We need to like reinforce your intuition as one of your senses that you wouldn't doubt. You don't doubt that you see, you don't doubt that you hear, don't doubt your body feelings that they are actually happening to you because that is a psychic sense. Your spiritual body is a part of your physical body, which is a part of your body as a whole. It's all interconnected and you need to Find faith in yourself and faith in others. Just as easily as you would follow somebody else, follow yourself. Follow where your own rabbit hole kind of is leading you, okay? Because I can tell you all day long what I think you should be doing, what I think you should be working with. But it's the feelings that you get whenever you approach a certain spiritual tool. You either gravitate toward it or you're like, mm, that's not for me. Or you're like, oh, fuck no, that's not for me. So it just depends on what you like. I had a client that got sent a voodoo candle. And I was like, that sounds exciting. Ooh, I wonder what we can do with it. And she was like, this is not for me. But she knew immediately as she got it, like it was, it was not for her. So you just have to 
trust what is coming to you is meant to come to you in the time because these intuitive moments are also lessons in what you are going to be spiritually and psychically drawn to and you just have to not turn them down that is i guess some piece of advice you could work on into 2020 is to just you know open yourself up to all of the things not just beat yourself up but it's like let's experiment let's get fun all right so your next card ooh is the crumbling and it shows a big huge tower and lightning coming down this tower but in the middle of the tower there's this beautiful field and flowers so there's potential for growth beyond this reeking chaotic storm that is happening at the top of the tower and it says the crumbling what are you clinging on to so I would definitely say that maybe abandoning anything that is holding you back, especially speaking to the boundaries card that we pulled for you, where all these people and all these energies are taking too much from you and you're having a hard time connecting to yourself because you're giving too much of yourself. It's kind of like when bitches are too nice. You need to just get that spiciness, um, have that fire going because you have so much potential for growth and change but you have to stop letting people like shit on you like you're a doormat you're not a doormat you're a powerful amazing beautiful goddess and i think everybody suffers from this at different points in their lives where they're just like i don't know how i got here and i don't know how to get out of this and it's hard. It's not easy. And sometimes the crumbling can be as small as you needing to add more water into your diet because you don't understand why you have such headaches. Or it can be as large as, fuck, I have to get out of this relationship because I'm dying inside. The crumbling is any moment in which you feel like you are more broken than whole. And sometimes it's easier to hang on to those broken patterns that keep us in the storm than it is to like move on from that. So I would definitely say before 2020 ends, write down all of the moments of 2019 where you felt the most broken and look for those patterns in which things have happened, in which people spoke to you, um, and moments in which you kind of undid yourself. And I know I'm giving you like a heavier, <laughs> a heavier kind of oracle goddess reading, but kind of is what it is. What are you clinging on to? What is gonna what is it gonna take to like push you off that edge to get you? Because ultimately you want to be in the valley of this beautiful river and these flowers and it twists and turns because life definitely is gonna have twists and turns, but you definitely don't want to stay at the top of this ridge with all of the lightning either. So you have to decide if you're ready to let go because either way, like the foundation of 2019 is crumbling away. Literally, we have less than a day left at this point. So shit's about to get real. You can take 2019 into 2020 or you could just, you know, jump off a cliff. <laughs> so... The next couple cards are, are really interesting ones because this speaks to your spiritual journey about where you should be going on your spiritual journey and how far you should be willing to go. And I would always suggest you testing your psychic limits because that is a way in which you can understand your own personal journey and your own personal growth. And don't let fear get in the way of that. 
So the next card is Awakening. And it's literally this woman floating in this beautiful starry sky and the universe is all around her. And she's just being uplifted by all this beautiful starry magnetic energy. And it literally says energetic upgrades, a new way of being and integration. And so this might, you know, say you need to do some soul retrieval work, say you need to start remembering more of your past lives. We just did past life month in TCC. If you need to do journeys again, I highly suggest you do them. Talk to one of the sisters and see if you can get your replays again or whatever you need to do. But I strongly suggest you take a look at where you started your spiritual journey and where you are now and just kind of collectively getting with your guides and maybe doing your own ritual. I feel like maybe you need to do something with water. Like water would be really relaxing and calm for you. And they're saying like, don't be afraid for people to touch you. You do have um, some dead people in your home. I can still feel it. And I feel like there's a lady, like if you sat down in your tub and took a bubble bath, there would be a lady that would want to touch either one of your shoulders. I don't think she's like harmful or bad, but I definitely think that, you know, you could use that energy to kind of learn and it could help open up your psychic senses to really connect more to like your spirit guides and your deepening your psychic abilities. So the next card that you got was in Rama. Where are you being called to journey to? And I love this because I just said bath. And in this card, there is a beautiful goddess standing next to um, a lots of water and this big, beautiful castle that is in front of her. And it's kind of like a castle of dreams, like it, she can go anywhere. So I want you to just take the water suggestion as a way for you to not only deepen your meditation, but to connect to your spiritual practice because water has memory. And that might be, in a sense, a way for you to dive more into yourself and not be afraid, but like you can be ultimately relaxed. Like, take some wine with you, girl. <laughs> Listen to some meditation music, put a face mask on, like, get in your zone um, because you deserve this. You have done such hard work inside of TCC as a whole and you deserve everybody deserves to have a deeper more enlightened connection to themselves at no point at any time should you not get that because that is your right so this was your goddess oracle reading I sincerely hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know how to find me. Bye.